What's up guys, Baka here, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to steam milk. Milk steaming is something that a lot of people overcomplicate. There's basically three things you're doing when you're steaming milk. You're adding heat to the milk, you're introducing air to the milk, or stretching it as some people like to call, and you're spinning the milk around and around in the pitcher. So some people call that the vortex, whirlpool, whatever. I like vortex because it sounds hotter. It's important to portion your milk out correctly. If you use way too much or not enough, you're gonna have a really hard time when it comes down to pouring patterns. It's gonna make it challenging. Once we got our milk in the pitcher, we're gonna go ahead and position our steam wand. We're gonna set it in a neutral position. It's going to be basically kind of straight up, straight down. There's not going to be any weird angle. We're not going to twist it around to the side or pop it up and have a lot of flare on it. We're going to purge the wand to get rid of any condensation or liquid that's in there. Now we're going to position the pitcher on the steam wand. So the heat's a freebie. If we put this thing on the steam wand, turn the steam wand on, it's going to get hot all by itself. We don't even really have to think about it. The two other things, the introduction of air and that vortex, are all dependent on how we position this thing. We're going to look at the depth of the steam wand in the milk, how far in or out is it? And then we're gonna look at the position of the steam wand in the milk pitcher. Is it on the side? Is it in the middle? We want the tip of the steam wand to be halfway in, halfway out of the milk. This positioning is gonna ensure that right when we turn the steam wand on, we're gonna get that suction right away. For the positioning of the wand in the pitcher, we're gonna have it about a third of the way off the side, not right in the center, but not slammed up against the sidewall either. And we're gonna lean the pitcher back towards us a little bit. This positioning is gonna make the milk wanna spin right off the bat. So once we've got this thing locked in, we're gonna focus all of our energy into keeping it in that spot and trying not to move it. Steaming milk is definitely a less is more kind of deal. The more you move the pitcher around, the worse your texture is going to be. Once you get it locked into that positioning and you turn the steam wand on, you wanna keep it as still as possible. So we're gonna take whatever hand you're most comfortable with, turn on the steam wand. Turn it on, don't be scared, let it go. Right when we turn that thing on, we should see and hear two different things. We should see the milk start to spin, start to get into that vortex, go around and around and around. We should hear that introduction of air start to happen, that little suction sound, the sound you've heard if you've been in any cafe in the universe. A lot of times when people hear that suction sound, they wanna move the pitcher around and try to manipulate it right away, just leave it exactly where it is. Now the more suction you hear, the more air is going into your milk. The more air you put in, the thicker your milk's gonna be, the less air you put in, the thinner it's gonna be. You kinda gotta do a bunch to kind of listen and look and get the feel for how much you want in there. Here's a couple sounds that you don't wanna hear. This sound, that's too much. You're blowing out the milk for sure. That's way too much air. Or this one, you don't hear anything. No air, you gotta get some air in there. When you think you've got enough air, you wanna take that pitcher and move it up on the steam wand just about a half inch. We just wanna make sure that the tip of that wand submerged so that we stop introducing the air. Move it up too far, you'll get a really weird vortex. The milk will start to rumble and it'll look awful. If you don't move it enough, you'll keep getting suction and you'll keep adding air and your milk will be really fuzzy. So once we're at this point, we should hear no more introduction of air, but we should still see the milk going around and around and around. What this vortex is doing is taking all the air that you've added into the milk and kind of distributing it evenly throughout the milk so that you get that nice buttery texture. If you've got only air but no vortex, you're just gonna have separated bubbly milk on top of liquid milk. If we've got all vortex and no air at all, we're just gonna have really hot milk spinning around and around and around. It's gonna be just hot and flat. So we've killed the introduction of air, still got the vortex going, and we're gonna feel for temperature. The best place to feel for temperature is near the bottom half of the pitcher. You wanna get it to where you can just about touch the pitcher for like a half second or so. Once you feel that, go ahead and turn the steam wand off. Gauging temp will take a little practice and a little getting used to, but if you use this method, you should be right around 155 degrees or so. Pull the pitcher off and wipe and purge the steam wand immediately to keep it clean. This is what it should look like really smooth, really glassy, almost kind of like a shiny look to it. Wet paint is a good descriptor for it. If you've got a couple little bubbles here and there, you can get rid of those by just tapping the pitcher out on the counter. If it's really, really grainy like this, you probably stretched too long or made it way too hot. It should pour really evenly and smoothly like this. It looks pretty liquidy, but as we see, there's pretty good depth of foam in there. This milk is perfect for pouring rosettas, tulips, any kind of latte art you want to do, and we're going to get into that next time and show you guys how to make some buttery designs. So that's it. Until next time we get into latte art, go ahead and practice that milk. You should have it dialed in in like a day. No big deal. Let me know how it goes. Peace.